In Kenya's president, William Ruto, has expressed deep concern over the suspected cold deaths. He condemned those using religion to advance what he described as, a, quote, weird and unacceptable ideologies, end quote. Kenya's inspector general of police says officers have so far rescued 29 people. He went on to say that DNA tests would be used to help confirm the relatives of those found dead. That we must, as a nation, continuously look out for those who want to abuse even the religious sector, people who are masquerading as religious people, yet what they do is contrary to the teachings and to the beliefs of religion, whether they are Christians, Muslim, or indeed any other religion. Terrorists use religion to advance their heinous acts. People like Mr. Mackenzie are using religion to do exactly the same thing. I want to say that the government of Kenya, and I have instructed the agencies responsible to take up the matter and to get to the root cause and to the bottom of the activities of all people who want to use religion to advance weird, unacceptable ideology in the Republic of Kenya that is causing unnecessary loss of life. Those who have since been rescued alive are 29. Um, well, by yesterday, 47 people and been confirmed the dead. However, today, again, additional 11. Therefore, that makes a number of uh, 58 people confirmed the dead. Um, and this is out of um, bodies exhumed and those who died on the way to the hospital. Well, we're now joined with, by Dr. Carolyn Ayuya Mwaka, Senior Lecturer of Clinical Psychology at Daystar University. She joins us via Zoom from Nairobi. Thank you so much for joining us on Africa Live, Doctor. How would you characterize this kind of event where mass deaths, mass deaths are attributed to religious activity or influence? Thank you so much, Hannah. First, let me just say it is important to note that uh, when people join a religious group or a cult, they are looking for purpose, they are looking for meaning, and they are looking for a sense of belonging. So they are likely to be easily be compelled with any compelling ideology, with something that can offer salvation or promise of salvation, and anything that is going to give them a sense of community. And therefore, that can be very attractive to any person who compares that this group or this cult or this religion is going to give me that, and therefore join that particular religion or that particular cult because it looks very attractive and it will obviously bring the sense of meaning, belonging and purpose that they are looking for. So I would just say that uh, probably this, uh, some of these things are being caused because of a complex interplay of many things, including manipulation, uh, of course, personal beliefs, and of course, motivation and social uh, pressures to be able to get a sense of meaning, purpose and belonging in their lives. Doctor, when we look at this, at this moment, these are allegations, and so we can't say for sure anything, but what does it take for a religious leader to gain the trust of such a big number of people who are willing to do the leader's bidding without question? Um, they actually use mind, mind control techniques. That's what I would say, first of all. For example, they coerce people into certain ways. For example, isolate them from the community control the access to information and use fear or guilt so that they can reinforce their beliefs. And therefore, most of them will be manipulated. Most of them will be able to, because of the guilt and shame they do not want, and also pay attention that they do not, they make sure that they don't access to information so they don't relay it. And it is so, it is so difficult for even anybody around to notice that is happening because of the kind of the psychological um, uh, mind control techniques that are used by these people to who, well, who they are looking for. 
So let's talk a little bit about that because when you when you talk about that, it sounds very much like mental health being involved. For those people who, in this particular case, for instance, and say that these allegations and investigations found that what what is being suspected is actually true. For people who have been rescued, do you speak to us about the kind of mental support they might need and also their families, what kind of mental support they might need for them to be able to continue with their lives? First, I must say that it's a tragedy. And I must say, uh, I really send, uh, send my condolences to the families that have lost their loved ones and they're looking for their kids without uh, trace. But I would say that, uh, first of all, we need to help address their emotional needs, address their practical needs, what they need. And of course, we want them to access counseling services so that they can be able to uh, navigate through the issues that they are facing. Uh, of course, giving them a lot of uh, support in the sense that uh, trust, that this is not going to cause you harm or this is not going to cause you intra-legal. But again, I'm helping them navigate legal and financial issues that are able to connect them with others because they have lost. Most of them have no property. Most of them have lost what they have. Most of them cannot go for legal services. So we as a society need to help them, other than the counseling support, the emotional needs, and other needs they need, we need to help them also access legal uh, uh, services as well as financial services to regain back what they have lost and connect back with the community and other family, uh, other family and friends.